welcome to the NBA Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined as always by Nate Weitzer on the East Coast. And we're both coming to you from a Tuesday here where we have an off day in the NBA, but we are getting ahead of this Wednesday slate with a ton of games as we all come back in one big hodgepodge of NBA slate for Wednesday night. So continue to follow along. We're going to bring you best bets in this video. We also have our play of props up for you as well. Doing really well in the best bets, I will say right now. We went we went three and two, but that's just because I lost a little like baby quarter unit bet overall in the best bets there went uh, plus 1.9 units, actually carrying the play of props a little bit, but up plus in both and on the season up plus 5.15 units. So we'll continue to roll along. Like and subscribe to that page. You can check us out each and every weekday this season. Also head to thelines.com. You can use that odds finder tool that we have up on the site right now. Make sure that you're getting the best odds available to you from all of these books that are giving us bets in the NBA this season. Nate, anything to add or you want to run right into your first best bet here? Um, I was a, an inch away from a clean sweep last night and Edwards toe on the line. They did not even go to video review because the Wolves were clearly about to win at that point. But that was his third three. <clears throat> Otherwise, you know, I'll take it. Trust the process. I'm going right back to the process here with the Brooklyn Nets <clears throat> and, you know, a different opponent coming to town that I want to fade. And that's the Clippers. So I'll take Nets money line half a unit. It's plus 150 right now. It's nice that we're getting you guys an early episode here because that's going to be dropping uh, as you go into Wednesday here, as people start to watch some of those Clippers highlights, <laughs> et cetera. Um, Nets uh, money line. Sure. Or we can go with another teaser here. Plus eight. If you get it up there and then the wizards and Hornets down to over two thirty six. Uh, I don't think you really need to lower a, a wizards over at this point. <laughs> Certainly not against the Hornets. I mean, they're going to be playing at a blistering place with LaMelo. The Hornets averaged like 116 since last year versus 107 without him. The Wizards are giving up 129, dead last in defensive rating. Um, and they're giving up a ton of threes at 40%, which is key for a Hornets team that is yet to get going at home. Charlotte has gone over in four straight after going under in two and I mean, feeling confident after that Wizards-Sixers game went to nearly 300 with the Sixers just scoring like 160 on this team. They have no interest in playing defense, and the Hornets are happy to get up and down and play a track meet. So let's talk about the Clippers. And, um, I mean, it's as awkward as you would think with that starting lineup with Russ, James Harden, PG, and Kawhi. Nobody knows who's supposed to be the alpha here. There's so much mental baggage from Russ and James in terms of who's supposed to run the offense, everybody. Is, and if James Harden is forced to play off the ball, it is disgusting. Like he is just such a net negative to your team. If he's trying to come off the ball, like you just watched him on some of those closing possessions and it's just like, Oh, he's making the same cut as that guy. Oh, Oh, okay. Uh, Oh, well, ew. this is, this is awful. Yeah. They got outscored by 14 in the fourth it, at the Knicks. Uh, they played at a 93 pace with a one Oh four offensive rating in their first game with Harden. He did. Get over his assist prop, just barely. Um, and the key thing is that Ty Lue did not bench him down the stretch, even though he clearly could have gone to Norman Powell and had a better chance to win that game. <clears throat> the Clippers probably going to play the long game here. They're not going to. They're not trying to offend either of those guards, Harden or Westbrook. Um, they're going to try to develop this chemistry as we go. And as we know, the Clippers are fully willing as a franchise to punt road games, to punt East Coast games. To not, you know, no, so they're not going to be going all out here to beat the Nets the next, uh, you know, two nights later. And the Nets I have continued to exceed expectations. Like, look, if the Knicks dropped all those points, handily beat the Clippers, the Nets are seventh in offensive efficiency and the Knicks are 28th. Like, Cam Thomas going off, Mikel Bridges, Dorian Finney Smith, talk about good matchups against Kawhi and PG when you have three elite. Wing defenders, uh, not though, not not Cam Thomas, but uh, the Nets have Ben Simmons to deploy on them, and he is playing good in his role as well. Look, the Nets have yet to to fail to cover all season, um, you know, and despite playing pretty good teams, they they have a one point loss to Cleveland, they have a close loss to the Bucks now, uh, coming off the same situation, so. I, I trust them to continue to pile on and to the Clippers' woes here as the Clippers try to figure out how to make this thing work. 
Yeah, you said a lot of interesting things there about the Clippers for sure. That would be a little bit more on the negative side of what you were talking about. Positive being the Nets are cover machines and they're one of two teams to now cover the spread in, in each of, one of their games or at least push depending on, on what your closing number was for them. Same with the, the 76ers who I'm excited to see you will be talking about in this video as well, by the way. But nothing to add there. Wizards, uh, Hornets, probably going to watch that. Probably going to bet on the Hornets. Still will take the uh, the points as well. But man, like that's going to be a track meet. Fun game to watch. Everything you said about the Clippers is true. And, and like I said, cover machines there for the Nets, man. It's going to be fun to kind of be able to get them, especially when they get Claxton and Cam Johnson back, who they haven't even had as they've been looking really, really good. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and move to a game that I think we both probably like. I'll see what your take is here. I'm going to take a, a same game parlay, though, for my first bet, which is Ant Edwards. Take him at a conservative 20 points in this game and Minnesota to beat the Pelicans plus 153 there. I, I was looking at it and I was playing around with it and I was like, you know what? I, I'm going to keep it uh, pretty simple here and not go even for the 25 points, which Ant's core um, line here for points is 25 and a half on most books. I still think that's a good bet. He got at least 25 in every game. Actually, at least 26 in every game last season against the Pellies. And like, man, he, he they're coming out hot out of the gate in large part because Ant is coming out hot. Um, and he, their defense is following suit as well, especially at home, where they have the number one defensive rating in the league so far this season. Uh, they're covering by 17 and a half points per game at home as well. And, the, and they're four and oh, covering every single time, winning by a ton, as I've said. So, you know, the, the teams they beat at home, by the way, are Boston, Utah, Denver, Miami. No slouches that they're that it's not like they're just beating up on the trailblazers uh, to be, at this point. You know, they, they have the, the number three net rating at home and number three, uh, fourth overall in the league as well. Still playing well, even on the road where they've uh, they did get beat pretty good a couple times. So um, I think for the the uh, Pellies, it's going to be a, a struggle bus, man. Like as soon as I saw the Herb Jones uh, note that he's out for a bit and they're going to have to reevaluate him. That's weeks on his timeline for returning. And that means that they're still out with a ton of guys, including CJ, who had a collapsed lung. So something that you have to keep in, in mind for him moving forward is he's not going to be out. We'll see what the, the report is uh, coming back and how long that takes for him to get that figured out. You know, obviously, most importantly for him, get healthy because that's really scary. Um, and then Trey Murphy and Najee Marshall still haven't played. So like that, that's going to be a big problem when you go now and you look at who's going to be. Uh, by the way, Jose Alvarado, say what you want. Also, really solid spark plug and legitimate point guard not available either. With Zion and and Brandon Ingram, it's a struggle right now, man. The two of them on the court at the same time, we've got a minus 15 net rating in 105 minutes together. That's over this year. You look at last year, it was also right around a negative two, right around uh, zero for, for stretches of the season when they <laughs> actually played together. So that's not a good look. Uh, that in the last game uh, that we just saw them lose to the Nuggets when the Nuggets came all the way back from down 15, minus 11 on the floor for Zion and a minus 29 out there for Brandon Ingram, who got some time with the, the bench as well and still couldn't make anything happen. On-offs for the season, neither of these guys very good, both in the minus double digits when it comes to their net rating for on-off uh, in the six games for Zion, four games for Brandon Ingram. Just just all around bad for them right now, man. I, I don't know that they're going to be able to figure it out against a really good defensive team at home in this Minnesota Timberwolves. And you look at Ant scoring, I'm being conservative, like I said. I'll see what you think about it. But the 31.5% usage for Ant on the season, probably something you continue to bank on, especially because, like, Cat's getting his. So I don't know that you're going to start hearing Cat bemoan unless he's really that big of an insecure baby that if Ant's doing too well, then he's going to start chirping. But for now, it's fine. He's getting his more than 16 shots a game for Cat, which should be enough for the best shooting big man of all time, putting that in air quotes. Um, and and for, for Ant right now, he's got a 15.6 net rating. In 36 minutes per game, these are his per 36 numbers, and they're very, very good. 28 points per game, nearly seven boards, and nearly five assists, with a hefty nearly four turnovers as well. Um, but we'll let that slide for the props that we need him to hit tonight. He's shooting out of control, and I was a little bit worried at first, the 47.5% that he's shooting from three. Will we see some progression? Probably, but we actually already saw it last night when he went two for eight from deep and still scored 38 points uh, in that win that they had uh, on Monday. So um, I, I think he's good for the 25. He scored that in all but one game this season. Um, and like I said, 25 plus in three games versus New or oh, his last four versus New Orleans dating back to two seasons ago. Yeah, you could go up to 25 here and feel pretty comfortable with Herb Jones out. Yeah, the Pelicans don't really have someone to throw at him. And Cat, yeah, while he's not he's not the man on offense, and I think he's understood that, he's still buying in on defense. And, and the key here, yeah, is Minnesota should be able to pack it in against the Pelicans team that's missing their best perimeter scorer now in CJ. 
and is going to have awkward spacing with with Zion and Ingram being the two guys there. So uh, I'm with you on the Wolves there. My second pick, yes, I am talking about the 76ers and Celtics, but I'm I'm going with a player prop here. Um, Christops Porzingis, 17 points, are over one and a half three-pointers made. Both pretty good odds here after a couple quiet games. And, I mean, the logic here is you basically, you got to pull Embiid away from the hoop. You got to you gotta make him respect the range, which Porzingis has. I mean, he he hit a couple of 30-plus point th- three-pointers there in the opener, went five for nine from deep. Since then, again, he's been quiet. There's been a lot of blowouts or that one road loss the Celtics are coming off, but he's averaging two threes a game on five attempts. This is Joe Missoula ball. you got to get him up. They're third in three-point attempts, fourth in makes, and 11th in percentage. And Al Horford being the guy who's trying to draw Embiid away, his last four against Philly has gone 12 for 28 from three in just 27 minutes. That's forty a 43% clip. The Zinger went in his last four against Embiid, 19 points per game on a 28% usage rate, six for 16 from three. Um, so I, I think, you know, more minutes in this matchup and and the spacing that the Celtics are able to play with, the, the rotation they're able to get the defense into, you should be able to, to get some looks for your big man here. The Sixers defense is inflated. I mean, that's that's the second biggest nut reason here to look at this is like, look at their opponents. It's the Suns without Book Beal, the Raptors twice, the Blazers with Scoot running the show, the Tanking Wizards, and the Clunky Bucks in their debut. Despite that, slightly below average opponent three-point shooting. Um, and that, you know, that is that is a very favorable slate for your packet in defense. Um, they also allowed the eighth most threes. Two centers last season because of this exact logic. People trying to pull and beat away, make him work um, so that he's not as fresh on the offensive end. Yep, hundred percent. I, I, I like your angle in this one, and uh, I kind of like the Celtics in this one as well. I, I do think there's a little bit of like, well, who have you played, Philly? You know, if, even if you see Phoenix on there, like you said, no Booker, no Beal, no real competition. Really, a ho hum win for them by double digits, and uh, and every everybody else that you mentioned. So I, I, the the small spread here. For the Celtics, who look, they lost a game on the road already, like we, we saw to the T Wolves, who I already mentioned are the best team at home, <laughs> basically on the season, uh, at least third best net rating and, and best defensive team. So I, I think we'll see what Philly's made of. It's always going to be a good game. And Bede went for 40 plus in the last two that they played last year. So, like, that's fine. It's not relevant to your bet. Just also going on my own tangent about how that's going to be a really good game. And maybe that you, you'd like a little bit on the Celtics in that one. But it was a stay away for me for a reason. My, my final pick here is an over on a game that I also am teasing because I wanted to get it down a little bit. And I, I was torn between two bets. So I'm teasing Toronto and Dallas down to 218 and a half on their total. It opened at 221 up to 222 as we're recording this. So I got to take the 218 and a half after teasing that down four points over that. And then Houston plus seven and a half. They're uh, plus three and a half right now. They also opened uh, at four and a half. And so we lost a little bit of value there. But I'm going to tease it back up above that number to seven and a half. Let's start with Toronto, Dallas, uh, Toronto right now. They I mean, look, it's a small sample size, but it's a little bit indicative of last season as well. They average more points per game on the road because they also play worse defense on the road. But they play the same style no matter what, which is like we're just better in transition because we have no half court offense. So please, Scotty Barnes, as soon as you get a defensive rebound, get it and go. And even when you don't get a defensive rebound, get it and go and try and beat the other team down the court before they can handle, you know, get their offense up. The teams that go under against them uh, for, for Toronto this season, it's a lack of pace. And it was a lot of made shooting as well. And it was on the road for predominantly for Toronto as well, where the, the teams that they played where they went under uh, were really slow teams that they played a couple of them at home as well. Chicago, Minnesota, uh, Portland all went under when they, when Toronto played them. They're all bottom five in pace. The three teams, we're talking about going over. Philly split one, but they, they went over in the first meeting. Milwaukee, San Antonio, all top 11 in pace on the season. So I, they are going to play a little bit more up to the, their comp and get it and go. Um, and the teams that play this pressing attack style offense are susceptible to them getting in transition on made baskets or otherwise, like Dallas, who I don't think we can expect to play defense anytime soon. They're, they're fourth in offensive rating on the season, 19th in defensive rating. Maybe Derek Lively gets a little bit better, but uh, there's not much there for them. Maybe Maxi Kleba comes back. Uh, it's still not 
great on the defensive end at that point. So I think, you know, you can continue to expect the way that they've been playing to be how they continue, um, which is a lot of offense, decent pace, um, still 12th in pace for Dallas, even though Toronto plays at a slow pace, they still get it out and go, like we said, because they don't want to play half court offense. Um, Luca <clears throat> unstoppable and has really owned OG who you expect to be guarding him in an OB last three meetings versus him, 33 points a game, 10 boards and seven assists. That's in 40 minutes. He's still playing more than 37 minutes right now per game. So it's pretty much his numbers and averages that he's already got against him uh, on the season, 32 points per game, 10 boards, nine assists. Like he's, he's, damn near unstoppable right now. And, and the good thing about the, the offense in this game is even when Luca's off the court right now for the, the Mavericks, they still have an 118 offensive rating, much better than when he was off the floor last season where they really couldn't get buckets. So um, lastly, Houston, not bad, not a bad team. And, and something that we're going to all start saying, I think, which is like, this is a good defensive team on top of the fact that we know Ime comes in and plays a defensive minded style uh, and, and really, you know, presses defense as in, the most important thing to his team. Like, they also have pretty good defensive players. Not, D- Dylan Brooks notwithstanding, obviously still have Jay Sean Tate out there. Um, the only real negatives on defense at times, Jalen Green and, and, and Fred Van Vliet, to be honest with you, and a little bit of Sangoon down low as well. Um, but he's been able to hold his own as well as a starting center recently, who, if you followed me on him last night, I really hope you didn't because he made me look the complete fool when I tried to take an under on his PRA, and he had a double-double with assists in that game. He was an unbelievable, uh, looked unbelievable in that game. No defense for DeMontis, unsurprisingly. My bet on that one. But now I'm going to back him and his squad to take on a, a Lakers team that tr- trouble with injuries, man. Like AD, not sure if he's going to play after leaving the fourth quarter against Miami. That would make it them mean they're probably playing without AD, Rui, Jackson Hayes, Gabe Vincent, and Jared Vanderbilt, who are both out for multiple weeks. That's that's going to be tough on a, a LeBron James, who's really good when they're when he's on the floor. They have their best offensive rating of 113, which is still not very good. Uh, that's why they're in the bottom seven in terms of offensive rating on the season for the Lake Show. Um, and honestly, even when AD's out there, I don't really know that it's that helpful right now with him on the floor. Much worse offensive rating than when he's off the floor because he just hasn't been in his aggressive self that we people who wanted to vote for him for MVP might thought he would do. Uh, I, I think they're going to be in trouble with LeBron needing to carry the bulk of everything that happens on both sides of the floor without those guys and a Houston team that's young and fresh and at home. Like, give, give me the points. I am fully on board with the, with the Dallas over. They just went over with the magic here. You know, a team that you would expect to go under in most situations. I think you might be stepping in here with Houston. I think they're, I think they're so. feeling themselves after beating a shorthanded Kings team. That's, yeah. you know, just came out completely flat. I mean, Dylan Brooks, yes, he's shooting out of his mind. What does he do? He pokes bears. You know, Steph Curry made him look stupid. They won by double digits, the Warriors. Le- he, LeBron James is the bear he poked last year. So if LeBron's got to carry this offense and, and play on both ends against Dylan Brooks, that's bad news for Mr. Brooks. Austin Reeves got it going against the Heat. Um, you know, they, they lost to the Heat, but by transitive property, we can't trust any result from the Heat in the, in the regular season. So to say the Lakers lost that game, I don't know. And if Anthony Davis is active and you're saying they, the, the Rockets have no weaknesses defensively, he's going to eat Shangun alive. Like defensively, <laughs> he is a baby compared to Anthony Davis. So plus seven and a half, a little more comfortable. But I would, yeah, I would be very wary about saying like Houston is going to win this game at home. Yeah, I like the seven and a half a lot if AD doesn't play. And I kind of like it. If even if he plays, because I just haven't seen it from him this season. Like I agree with you that he's capable of eating Shangun alive. When 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 are we going to see that from him? He's been capable of eating every single opponent alive. And like I said, they have an 106 offensive rating in his minutes this season. So I, I don't like what I'm seeing from LA right now with the need for D'Lo to do so much on offense. Um, and even if Rui doesn't play, yeah, Austin Reeves hasn't looked like himself. He came back a little bit more against the Heat. We'll see if that like turns him up a little bit, but. Still, you know, th- this total is low for a reason. And I think if I get it up to like seven and a half like that, I think that that the, the low total will be helpful in this game, probably staying pretty close uh, down the stretch. So we'll, we'll see in this one. It's a little bit dangerous. Keep an eye on if AD plays. And if he does, you, you know, don't don't feel the need to just tail this this tease here. But definitely like the over in that Dallas game, like you said. So. That is all the time we have for you in this one. Continue to follow along. Also have our play a props video up for you today uh, for that Wednesday slate in the NBA. So until we see you next, happy betting. Stop, 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 stop.